What's up guys, it's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos and let's get started. So today I've got kind of a random drugstore swatch and review for you and the reason that it's kind of random is because I'm not sure if these polishes are new. I couldn't figure out from the internet if these are new releases or if it's just some regular random shades but I did get some polishes from Sally Hansen in the mail and I thought they were super pretty so I figured I would just swatch them and I thought you guys might appreciate that. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. I've got six shades to go over. Two of them are duochromes that actually almost look a little multi-chrome, which I feel like is very trendy right now, so I thought that would be pretty cool. We've got two creams, and then we've got two glitter toppers. So really quick, before we get into it, just a little bit about Sally Hansen. They are a mainstream drugstore brand. Today I'm going to be reviewing their Miracle Gel line, but they do have a ton of other lines as well. This line in particular, a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because it is called Miracle Gel, however it does dry by air. You do not cure it by a lamp. But regardless, I do think it's a really good formula and I do enjoy their Miracle Gel line even though it is not technically a gel polish. It's just a gel-like polish so don't be confused by that. But I do want to note two really quick things that I actually don't really mention a lot in my Sally Hansen videos. One is they are a cruelty-free brand and I get a lot of comments about this because for some reason a lot of people, myself included for a while, did not think that Sally Hansen was cruelty-free. But I did check their website and on the Sally Hansen FAQ on their own website. They do say that they don't test on animals, their parent company does not test on animals, so they are technically cruelty free by those standards. And then the other thing is they actually don't say anywhere on their website if they're three free or five free or any of those free that means that they are free of those dangerous chemicals that are often found in nail polish. But I did check their ingredients list and it looks like they're at least five free, but they don't say anything about that. So if you do have any allergies, I would just be wary and check the ingredients of the specific line that you're using because I'm not 100% sure on that, but I did notice that they don't have formaldehyde, they don't have formaldehyde resin, they don't have camphor or toluene or DBP, so I'm sure I'm pronouncing those things wrong, but I did notice that their ingredient list does not have those things. So yeah, I just wanted to say that because I feel like those two things are not really mentioned at all when it comes to Sally Hansen, and I figured I should mention them, just my little amount of research that I did. But I still couldn't figure out if these are new polishes, so my research was somewhat futile, but at least I figured out that amount of information. But anyway, Anyway, that whole little lecture aside, let's just get to the polish swatching. These are some pretty shades, so let me show them to you. So roll footage. So technically the Miracle Gel line does not require a base coat. However, I always like to use base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nails and prevent any stains. It also will help your manicure last longer. So let's start off with the duochromes because I feel like they are super exciting. This first shade is called Hypnotical and this is actually what I'm wearing in the intro and outro to this video. And basically it's just a a really pretty purple base color that has a duochrome shifting shimmer running throughout that shifts from a light blue into a deeper cobalt blue and then from there into a purple. So it's actually really cool. It does have a multi-chromatic feel to it even though it is a duochrome. So I feel like this is a really great drugstore alternative to the multi-chrome style that's been going around. Even though it is definitely a duochrome, not a multi-chrome, it's really cool to see when you angle your hand in different ways you get different variations of purple and blue which is super awesome. I will say this is a little bit on the thinner side. I feel like I can definitely get away with two coats on most of my nails, but some of my bigger nails, like my thumbs, required three, so I wanted to show you guys what it looks like in three coats. It was just a touch patchy in the second coat. Next up, we have the shade Hologram. <laughs> Which, first of all, craziest name ever, but second of all, this is probably the most unique duochrome I have ever seen in my life, and my swatch absolutely does not do this justice. I think this is a shade that you really have to see in person in order to see that multi-chrome shimmer that runs throughout. I am pretty sure that the shimmer in this is actually a multi-chrome, so it's got this brownish maroon base, and then it has a shifting shimmer in there that changes from green to blue to purple to pink and then even to orange. Orange. It's really more visible in the bottle than it is on the nails, but on the nails I definitely saw a gold to pink to purple shift and then I also at some angles saw some of that green shift as well. So again, it's just a really cool way to kind of dip your toes into that multi-chrome trend without having to buy an indie brand. But again, it was a little bit on the sheer side. I did end up having to do three coats for this one as well. I don't know, it's interesting. I'm not sure if I love the color, but I definitely 
definitely think it's super unique. Moving on from the duo chromes, the rest of the collection, we have two creams and two glitter toppers. This is the first of the creams and it's called To The Taupe, which as you could imagine is a taupe cream shade. So it's basically like that really nice, cool toned, beigey, almost pinky undertoned cream. And this one had a really impressive formula. It was definitely easy to work with. I feel like my brush was maybe a tiny bit wonky, but it didn't really affect the formula at all as it was pretty self-leveling and it was pretty easy to move around my nail. I do think it looks a tiny bit sheer in my swatch though. I almost wonder if I could have benefited from a third coat from this one as well. And here is the other cream. This one is called Rose and Shine and it's a really beautiful salmon cream shade. It definitely looks a little bit warmer on my nails than it did in the bottle and this one had really impressive coverage and opacity. It was almost a one coater on me but I did end up doing two coats. I just feel like this is one of those classic pinky salmon cream shades that I always love to have in my collection and the formula on this one was absolutely incredible. Super easy to work with. Really great formula and I just really like this color. It's like I said it's a classic. And then moving on to the glitter toppers. This first one is called Deep Sea Diamond and it is a metallic silver glitter topper. This one actually has mini and micro hexagon glitters as well as slightly larger irregular shard flake glitters which I think is super awesome and unique. I personally love those irregular flaky toppers. I think they just add a bit of interest to the nails and kind of a cool irregularity that makes the manicure a little bit more interesting to me. And then we also have the gold version of that which is called Sunken Treasure. So this is again has the micro and mini hex glitters and then it also has the slightly larger shard flaky irregular glitters. So again, super cool. I personally have been in such a topper mood lately. I know I've been telling you guys a lot and I always love having a drugstore version because they are much more accessible. So these are definitely going to come in handy for a lot of nail art and topping. So here are all of the polishes together. Like I said, I'm not sure if this is a collection or if it's new, but I figured I would just show you guys a comparison just in case you wanted to see. Basically feels like we have three sets of two here. So we've got the two duochromes, the two creams, and the two toppers, and I think all of them work pretty well. This doesn't necessarily feel like a winter collection to me, it just feels like a nice solid collection of colors, so hopefully these will be available any time of year. So yeah, those are the polishes. I really liked them. I always enjoy Sally Hansen. I think I have a lot of their different lines that I really like, but the Miracle Gel line to me just feels like a more higher-end brand. It does to me feel like a salon brand, which I guess is fair because it is a little bit on the higher price point as far as Sally Hansen goes, but I do still think it is worth it because I really enjoy their stuff. And I also thought that those duochrome shades were really cool. I think they do have an almost multi-chrome vibe to them, which is really impressive, especially because multi-chrome seem to be more of an indie brand thing, so it's cool to see that kind of thing being in more mainstream brands, although I will say technically these are just duochrome polishes. They aren't shifting like every color of the rainbow. So yeah, these polishes are available wherever you can find the Sally Hansen Miracle Gel line. I did notice that some of these stores that carry them aren't available online, but they are in store. I did also see that they are available on Amazon. So I will link all of those down below so you guys can check that out if you're interested. But yeah, so that's it for my part of this review, but I would love to hear from you guys. First of all, does anybody know if these are new shades? <laughs> and the second, what do you think of these? Do you like them? Are you planning on picking any of them up or have you already? Let me know in the comments. You know I love to chat with you guys. If you enjoyed my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. And that is it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Okay, today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Amanda. And Amanda wants to know, do you have a least favorite Pokemon? If so, what is it? So I gotta say, I feel like nobody really asks who your least favorite Pokemon is. And truthfully, I think there are a lot of Pokemon in that franchise that are pretty dumb. There is one in particular that actually just brings me so much anger for some reason. I just can't even express why I hate this Pokemon so much. But I feel like there are a couple of classes of dumb Pokemon. Like first, there's dumb Pokemon that evolve into cool Pokemon. Like obviously Magikarp is a dumb Pokemon, but it evolves into Gyarados, which is cool. And then there's also like Abra, who I don't think even learns any moves until it evolves into Kadabra. So again, a dumb Pokemon, but it evolves into something cool. So it's useful at some point 
in its existence. And then there are other Pokemon that I personally think are dumb, but I think they're useful in game because there are some that are awful Pokemon, but you get a lot of experience points when you fight against them. So I feel like in that case, they are useful. But then we have Love Disk, which is my least favorite Pokemon. I don't know why it makes me so angry. First of all, it is a fish scale fish and it's shaped like a heart, which is dumb. Second of all, stats are terrible. Third of all, it doesn't evolve at all. And fourth of all, you don't get any experience. Well, you get some, but you don't get enough experience points for the amount of effort it takes to battle one. You may as well just not run into one at all. And I just think it's the dumbest Pokemon ever. And it just makes me so irrationally angry. Love Disk is my least favorite Pokemon. It's pretty dumb. So <laughs> somebody whose favorite Pokemon is Love Disk is going to be pretty mad at me in the comments. But honestly, if you like Love Disk, please explain to me why, because I I would love to meet somebody who can convince me that Love Disk isn't the dumbest Pokemon of all time. So if you do like Love Disk, let me know in the comments. And if there's another Pokemon that you think is absolutely awful, let me know your thoughts because I love talking about Pokemon. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.